Hello. Let's be a little dramatic, shall we? Welcome to my channel. Welcome to coming into frame. Hey, my name is Ivy. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome for the first time. I really like to chat about beauty. I love to share the new things that I'm trying and the things that I love, and sometimes even the things that I don't love. Today's video is a mashup of two palettes in my collection. I'm using the Isamaya Beauty Industrial Pigments Palette and the Vizart Dark Mattes Palette. Pay no attention to those beautiful shimmers in the middle. I'm only using the mattes today. Um, but I do have a little bit of a disclaimer about the Isamaya Palette that is going to be in the next set of footage that you see, just so you don't think I'm wackadoo for posting this video. I'm really excited about the look that I was able to do with these two palettes that I felt paired perfectly together from their color stories. And yeah, I just kind of had fun, experimented, played around. There's a few clips that I didn't manage to record. I'm still getting used to all this techie stuff. So um, most of the look I do film on camera, but there's a bits and pieces that I skipped. Should be a fun one. I would love for you to comment, share, subscribe, do all that stuff in your spare time. I'm here for you. I'm here to talk about all of this stuff with you anytime. Here in the comment section on Instagram, you can find me. I'm always up for a conversation. Uh, so with all of that, let's get into the look. All right. Hello, disclaimer Ivy here, um, coming to you from the future. Uh, literally today, <laughs> is Amaya Beauty had another launch um, of lipsticks in the shape of cock and balls that are selling for a hundred dollars. So I'm just gonna leave that there. But that's not what this disclaimer is about. There were some developments as far as is Amaya Beauty, her brand, and her. Um, what I'm going to call volunteerism efforts. I did not come up with that term. That is a term that you can look up. But um, suffice it to say that there's been some glamorization, I feel, on her part of, uh, you know, white saviordom going around and helping people. With, you know, it just, it, 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 it's enough to give you an ick factor. Whether or not you deem it, uh, you know, horrible enough to want to not support her brand is totally a personal decision. For me, it gave me enough of that ick factor that I don't think I will be supporting her brand in the future, whether or not I like something that she's come out with. I don't think moving forward, she is the brand for me, but, that said, I bought this palette. I love this palette. I intend to use the crap out of this palette. I'm not gonna let future events color what I already have and what I've already spent money on. So I, I think that the whole reason that I wanted to do this stands true. I want to bring you guys looks using makeup that's come out that isn't like 100% brand new so that you can see that I'm using what's in my collection. And that's a really big part of what's important to me. So I did feel it was important to come on here and say I'm not ignorant to what's going on with her. And no, I don't intend to support her moving forward. But again, if you do, that's a personal decision. And I am not about to cancel anyone who decides that they're still interested in her brand and what she's doing. I just probably won't be one of those people. Um, but I'm not going to let this beautiful palette sit on the shelf going unused. So we're going to use it today and uh, we'll see what the future holds. And with that, here endeth my little disclaimer. So let's finally get into this makeup look. So I've been debating about what base I want to do today for my face. What well, base for my face? This is the Ordinary um, Coverage Foundation. So actually in my last video, I showed you that I was using the Serum Foundation. I then found out that the Ordinary is gonna be discontinuing their colors line, which is a bummer in my opinion. But I took advantage of the fact that they're kind of getting rid of all the rest of their stock and um, picked up the Coverage Foundation, which I had not tried before. And this is in the shade 1.2N Light Neutral. I just wanted to compare the two foundations. Um, 
I think that this neutral color is actually much better for me than the serum foundation, which I have yellow undertones in. Just right now, I'm pretty pale. Even though I love the texture and consistency of both, the serum one is definitely a little bit thinner um, and a little bit um, glowier. Uh, this one is still pretty glowy and not too, too, too full coverage and a slightly better shade match for me at the moment. Here it is, just so you can take a look on the back of my hand. So it's still got a little bit of runniness to it, but it's not crazy. If you were to compare this to the serum foundation, um, it's definitely got more hold to it. So I'm just going straight in. Um, I really love this Eco Tools fancy buffing brush. It's called the Ultimate Buff, and it's just got that huge, thick, dense, flat top to it. One of my favorite foundation brushes. I'm someone that likes to typically buff my foundation in, um, and so I love a good buffing brush. Uh, I don't have a lot of those like paint style uh, foundation brushes personally. Just love to like rub into my face. <laughs> okay, that is one layer of, with one pump of the Ordinary Foundation. Again, they are discontinuing the colors line. If you've been interested in trying it, I know that they're they're kind of out of most of their shades at this point, but it's worth taking a look because it's very inexpensive and um, they're not gonna keep making it, so check it out. I'm gonna zoom you in a little more. Let's, oh, that's the other way. Let's zoom in a little more. Um, because I'm going to be putting on my concealer, the Skin Mimetic Concealer from Make Beauty. I don't know if this is going to focus on it, but anyway, it's in this beautiful, nicely weighted black tube. Um, it has a lovely kind of nice doe foot applicator with a little hole in the middle of it. I have the shade, what is it called? I always forget when I'm in, 04 Light W. Um, and I have been playing around with this concealer a lot. I've also been playing around with the Colfi concealer a lot. This is one of my favorites right now. But what I realized about this concealer is that it's more buildable than I thought. So I was originally sharing that I thought it was very light coverage for very light coverage days. <laughs> and um, the founder, Carrie Barber from Make Beauty, messaged me because she saw I tagged the brand and was basically like, hey, just so you know, it's a it's a really buildable foundation. So, you know, it is very light and skin like, but try layering it up and see what happens and, you know, see if you can get the level of coverage that you're looking for, because I am someone who tends to like lighter coverage uh, foundation and concealer products. So um, I took her advice as she is the founder of the brand. And she was right, surprise, <laughs> she was right. It is very buildable. And I hadn't um, admittedly tried to, to do that myself. I hadn't tried to do a lot of building up of the product. Um, so since I kind of learned that, I have definitely been reaching for it even more than I was um, because I do really love how it looks. I love the consistency. I like the shade match um, for me. And so now that I feel like I have the ability to just get a little bit more coverage with it, I'm I'm more prone to using it. Anyway, it's a long-winded way. I don't know why I always have to tell stories in the long-winded fashion, but <laughs> apparently that's my thing. You can see it's layering up really nicely. Like I'm getting a nice lit, glowing under eye, but it's not looking cakey. It's not looking creasy. It's just adding a little bit more coverage. Um, it's still a light, it's still a light coverage. I mean, let's, let's be real here. It's not, if you're looking for a really heavy duty concealer, this is probably not, still not going to be your best friend, but um, it layers very nicely. So I, I, do, I do really like it personally. I'm recommending it as something that you might want to consider if you like light coverage foundation products. So anyway, I think next I'm gonna do just a quick layer of bronzer. 
I'm gonna go in again with kind of my tried and true makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I have the shade Light Medium. Um, I do honestly reach for this most days. I kind of apply it differently. Today I'm gonna use another buffing brush and it just adds such beautiful and seamless warmth to my skin which is really on an everyday basis all that I want. I just want to feel warm and lit from within and uh, you know I don't want to I don't want to dilly dally too much. This is extremely quick to apply. Oh my gosh I just looked. I like started to hit pan on this thing. Look at that. That's really exciting. I think I'm also gonna just do a little light layer of the Pat McGrath under eye setting powder under my eyes today as well. I am gonna be doing a little bit more of a heavier eye look, so having a little bit of powder under my eyes isn't gonna hurt. And I think the last thing I'm gonna do for prep is put a little bit of lip balm on. Uh, just to ensure I don't get super dry before the end of the look. And all right. Okay, so first things first, you've maybe probably most likely seen what the Isamaya Beauty Palette looks like. By the way, I don't know if it's Isamaya or Isamaya. I'm sure this is something that I could easily look up but I'm not going to. So I'm probably gonna to refer to her in both ways throughout this video. <laughs> first things first is I wanted to give you a look at the palette. Inside you can see it's a lot of different shades in a lot of different textures. And the color story is this very cool kind of grungy brown green oil slick shimmer kind of vibe. It's been a really inspiring palette for me. I, I look at it and I sort of like get excited. If you're someone that really likes to use one palette to do your full look, this is kind of missing those like matte shades to complement the sparkle shades. When you look at the palette in its totality, it actually is closer to being an all shimmer palette than kind of anything else, um, because I kind of discount those shades as being like true mattes. Um, and even though I love to play with them, I think that they're really fun. They're not gonna substitute what you might want with a, with a matte palette. So that is why when I saw the Vizart Dark Mattes palette go on sale, I was like, this is the perfect, <laughs> the perfect companion story to the, the, to the Isamaya Industrial Pigments palette. So, like I said, this is the Vizart Dark Mattes palette. Now I have customized this with some um, Cleona shadows. That is the row running down the middle, um, or the column, I should say, running down the middle. And then I've kind of kept my favorite matte shadows on either side. What's great about these little Vizart palettes is that they're super customizable and easy to take the shadows out of. There's like little divots in each um, you know, pan area where you can kind of get your tool in to get the shadow out. Um, not to like nerd out on you, but I just really appreciate how easy it is um, to customize this palette. Like this is clearly made for makeup artists. But yeah, so I felt like it was a really good pairing. I know a lot of you agreed and were like, yes, we want to see what you would do. I mean, I'm probably, let's, let's be honest, I'm probably going to reach for some greens. It's in my nature to reach for green. So, um, I'm gonna start a little bit, let's zoom in even more. Hold on, Ooh, wrong way. Let's zoom in, okay. So I'm gonna start by, I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna do a little bit of a halo eye. I know it's boring, whatever, I'm gonna do it. Just bear with me here. Um, and I'm gonna start with this kind of olive khaki shade on the outer and inner portions of my eye. And you can see like right away, look at the pigment from Vizart. Like, look at that. It's so, they're so pigmented and they're so creamy 
and easy to blend. Yeah, I'm just kind of right now building up the pigment on the outer and inner portions of my eye and then I'm gonna buff that out a little bit and uh, layer up some darker shades. But this is such a nice uh, khaki color. It really can run warm or cool depending on what you pair it with. And this is, by the way, one of the Spectrum Katie Jane Hughes brushes. I think this is number 16. I don't talk much about brushes that I use because I find that whatever tools you feel like will work for you, uh, you should use. There's no, I don't think that you need to have certain brushes to like achieve a certain kind of look personally. Um, but if you're ever curious what I'm using, just ask. I'm always happy to share what I'm enjoying using brush wise. Also, my toxic trait is that I'd rather like buy new brushes than have to wash the ones that I have. <laughs> Which is probably how I ended up with a lot of brushes, like way more than any one person who's not a professional makeup artist should have. So personal opinion is like, I don't think that you need to invest a lot of money in like really crazy eye brushes because you can even get dollar paint brushes at the store, like the art store, and those will make for great eyeshadow brushes as well. You don't need to, I don't think you need to get like crazy fancy eye brushes. Um, okay, so that's just a little bit of that khaki shade from the Vizart palette. Um, I think what I'm going to do next is just like kind of keep building on the matte look and and maybe play with a little bit of this like dark navy on the outermost corner. Let's just add a little bit more depth. Start putting that in my outer corner. Tapping that in, kind of tapping that over the khaki shade and then almost like stamping it into my face. I'm not worried about blending yet. I'm just trying to get the pigment on there. Um, and then let's take a blending brush, probably has makeup on it. Let's take a blending brush and just soften the overlap there, blend those together, and blend out the edges. I think I want this look to be very like smoky and soft, not harsh and graphic. We'll save a graphic eye for another day. Okay. So I'm feeling pretty good about how we've started to build the matte look up, but I want to kind of set off um, some of these cooler tone green blue shades with a little bit of warmth. So I'm taking um, that, show you, taking this warm brown from the matte palette and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that up in my crease as a transition shade just to kind of warm up where they meet before I get to my eyebrow and almost create like a little bit of a shadow underneath there. What's really, I, I love to pair cool tones and warm, to, warm tones together. And um, I feel like they just always set each other off so nicely. So, you know, the greens will look a little more green and the blues will look a little more blue when they're next to this kind of like warm brown shade. How do we feel? Okay, so that is, I'm gonna pause with the mattes. Let's, let's go back to the Isamaya palette and, or the Isamaya palette. This is gonna drive me crazy. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to call it. Um, and let's start figuring out what shades we wanna use from this. I wanna pair the, the, this like brighter orange um, copper shade with one of the greens. Um, and I want this look to have some brightness to it. So I think the copper shade is going to kind of be the brighter color and I'm going to use one of her more murky greens to sort of, again, set that, set that shade off so that it ends up being the brightest thing. I love to use my fingers. They're my favorite tools. 
I will see, you, you will see me most often apply eyeshadow, especially sparkly eyeshadow with my finger. It's not that I don't ever use brushes. I definitely do, but I will always go in with my finger for like highest impact. Okay, so this is, um, by the way, it's really hard for me to tell what name applies to which shadow in this palette. So don't ask me for names. I'll just point to you and show you that I'm gonna use this kind of slight duochrome. I think duochrome is being a little kind to this shade. I wouldn't call it a true duochrome because it's much more dominantly green. But I'm just taking my finger and tapping that over the matte shades. Again, keeping it kind of more to the outer third of my eye and blending that in. Now, I'm not trying to be mean to this shade by saying it's not a true duochrome. I still love it. I just think that if you're used to a certain level of duochrominess from like an indie shadow brand, that is not what is here. It's like much more subtle. It's much closer to like a Pat McGrath type of formula than, than, a, than an indie brand. But it's very pretty. I love, I love the tones of this this shade. It's like a very, very, very me <laughs> type of shade. So I'm gonna use another finger and I'm gonna go into that copper shade and now I'm gonna fill in the space here on my lid that I was leaving open. And this is where I want that hit of light, that hit of brightness to really sing and really come off. So it's not quite a it's not quite a traditional halo. I'm kind of positioning it so that it's coming a little more in. I just want it to feel a little cooler. I don't want it to be super like we've seen that before. Like, okay, I know everyone knows how to do a halo eye. But doesn't it feel different when you place it so that it's more like a swipe going across your eye? Like it feels I think it already looks cooler and feels different. Doesn't this look cool? This is like coming together like a paint swash. Okay, I'm like getting into my own idea here. <laughs> and you can see I'm bringing it up to my brow bone so that, you know, I'm not, I'm not limiting myself to just the space on my sort of traditional lid. And I'm probably gonna um, take a brush and like buff this out a little bit, but I like that it is becoming like a true like paint swash kind of thing. Like that's cool. So yeah, I'm just taking a little bit, another clean buffing brush just to edge out some of these sparkles a little bit more so that it's not super duper 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 harsh. So I love this. This is another shade that I love from the palette. It's um, when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a lot like Space Cowboy, the Urban Decay shadow that I love. It's like a topper shade. It's really nothing like Space Cowboy, but it is very cool. It has those celestial-like sparkles, that kind of like scattered light effect. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and also kind of place it around the edges where this like paint swash is meeting my eyebrow and just tap tap it on for a little bit more light. Now, if I was feeling really frisky, I would just go ahead and use Space Cowboy because honestly, that would be perfect here. It would give you a little more scattered light effect than this is doing, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna be feisty. I'm just gonna use these two palettes today. We're gonna leave it at that. That's cool. Okay, I'm like really getting excited. I think I wanna add just a, t a touch of that um, what do you call it? That copper shade uh, also to my bottom lid. So I'll just keep it kind of in the same placement as I did above so that it looks like it's almost like running through my eye. Let's do that. See? Right here. I'm really getting into this. Not to be, not to be like toot my own horn. But you know what? Sometimes you need to toot your own horn, you guys. That's something I'm trying to get into a little bit more this year. Like, there's nothing wrong with being into yourself a little bit and giving yourself some love. Um, I think I'm all about being humble, but 
I've gotten in trouble in the past with like not giving myself enough love and enough credit. So you know what? I look cool. And I'm gonna tell you that I think I look cool. Um, I think I'm gonna play with some of those putty shades just to kind of smoke out a bit more in the corner and like edge out my, my um, lash line a little bit. All right, so I finished up that look with a little bit of the putty shades in the inner and outer corner and also um, using a little bit of like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of liner, just like a smidge on this outer corner as well, like a baby wing, if you will. Uh, and then I reached for that very cool, like it looks white in the pan, but it's actually got a purple shift to it shade from this palette. And I use that right on my inner corners for just like a pop of light. Um, I overall think that this look came out really cool. It's a very me look, which is probably the bulk of what you're gonna see here on this channel are me looks. Um, but this is the kind of thing that I would wear pretty much any day of the week, to be honest. This isn't like a non-work look. I would wear this to work. I do wear this to work. So I um, I think that it is still very wearable while being a little bit more fun, a little more bright, grungy, all those key buzzwords. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this look and I think that the rest of the makeup was very simple, basic. I'm not even gonna get into it. I'll put the details of the rest of my face in the description box, but it's really basic. The star of the show, the whole video is really around playing around with these two eyeshadow palettes, which is exactly what I wanted to do and I had so much fun doing it. So um, if you made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate you. Thank you for sticking around. Thanks for sticking around this channel um, or joining this channel if you're new. I'm, I'm excited. I'm always excited to be here. Whenever I get a chance to make a video, it's a good day. So thank you, Phil. <laughs> it's a good day. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. All right, thanks, bye.